all the drums in the track are made with metal objects um, and one synth, the other synths, I tried to keep metallic sounding but they aren't actually based on metal samples. So the first thing I did was find some metal samples to use uh, and for that I uh, used um, Warehouse Sound Effects by 99 Sounds uh, which isn't entirely metal object sounds, but there's like there's some glass and stuff in there, but it's mostly stuff like that. Um, so I use a lot of the bolt lock ones. Um, so I think the kick is bolt lock one. That one, which they I pitched it down an octave. And then I use, if we take the inserts, take the inserts off. So that's what it sounds like without any uh, effects, just pitch down an octave. And then I added a um, plugin called MH Thump, which synthesizes which synthesizes some low end um, because the sample didn't really have a lot of low end so let's just add some in there and then uh, saturation knob which just brings out some more high end frequencies distorts it slightly, compresses it and then finally OTT which I use a lot on this project, and that just um, compresses it and also uh, does some EQ. Um, so it brings out the, the low frequencies a lot and then just slightly cuts high and mids. Uh, and so then, if we move on to the snare. That's. Um, Three samples, uh, Metal Strut 3, uh, which the original is here, so that's the original sample, um, and so I've got one, I tuned it, so it's um, pitched down one semitone, and then the other one's pitched down an octave from that, um, so if we move the inserts disable inserts and oh, okay they don't have any inserts so those two um, sound like that and then got that sample as well uh, I think most of these are un unchanged uh, I think I might have tuned and oh, no, I didn't even tune that one um, and then there's this one which is actually a math book it's not a metal it's not a metal sound but oh well um, and so those will go into the snare clap um, group channel and that has uh, another saturation knob it's just distorts it, distorts it, compresses it, um, brings up some higher frequencies, and then just a compressor. Um, then we've got hi hats, which are two samples, uh, metal pipe three, which is for the open hi hat, and then metal bolt five. Like a closed hi hat, and I think I pitched these. Yes, that one's up four semitones. That was actually down one. Um, so play that. So I don't. So that one's got a little bit of. That's just a high pass filter um, on metal pipe three, the open hi hat, and then nothing on close hi-hat and they both get fed into the hi-hat mask channel with uh, another high-pass uh, then compressor 
Um, then some very quick panning. 16th note left to right, um, which goes into plate reverb. And then some slower left to right panning. That's, um, makes it at 54%, so that's a bit more subtle. And then finally some sidechain compression. Um, I like to sidechain hi-hats, so I just like the way it sounds, brings the kick out a bit more. Um, I think that's pretty much it for drums, then it's just like some impact, so to get like a um, uh, a rise effect, um, I just took bolt lock um, one and bolt lock one, it was either bolt lock one or bolt lock three and then just drenched it in reverb, exported it, re-imported it and reversed it to get this and then put sidechain on it, I think, is that it? Um, bit of compression then sidechain, yeah. Just to get a nice riser effect and then um, I took Kate in reverb, which is another sample. Uh, Um, and then I think I pitched it up a bit. Yeah, transposed it up nine semitones, and then I did a high pass filter, some saturation, and then put some sent off to the plate verb to get like a crash symbol. Um, oh, impact. Uh, so I think that's it for the drums. So all together that sounds like this. And then the master channel just has a um, bit of distortion, um, compressor, uh, a little bit of EQ. I like to cut around 600, 700, just gets rid of some unwanted frequency in drums. And then a high pass and low pass filter for structuring and rising um, automation. Uh, so I think that's it for the drums. Then if we move on to the synths. So there's four synths on the track. Um, the first one I did was this bass sound. Uh, and so that started off as a dext, uh, which is uh, an emulation of the uh, Yamaha DX7, which is an FM synth from 1983, uh, as the first successful digital synth. Um, and it's known for having quite um, a metallic, cold sound, which is what I wanted. Um, so, if I remove the inserts, go back to them. Um, got that kind of sound. And so then that goes through um, so it's it's quite it's very compressed and so it brings up dext obviously has quite a high noise floor so it brought up a lot of noise so I used loud max which is is actually a limiter plugin but I really like it for automating volume because I don't really like to automate the main volume slider because it's quite difficult to it's occasionally quite difficult to get it back to the zero mark and I like to keep it for mixing so if I'm automating volume I usually use loud max because it it maxes out at zero um, so you can't accidentally boost anything which can cause clipping and other stuff uh, so then it's really quite heavily compressed through um, just a standard compressor and then OTT and then it goes through distortion again this is um, Berserk by Waves. 
uh, and then I exported that out or mixed it down, re-imported it, and then that's got um, some plate reverb, another compressor, and then uh, some sidechain and a bit of EQ. Um, so that's that one, and then there's a vibraphone, which is yeah, Halion Sonic. Um, so, I mean, technically, because I think Halion Sonic is uh, based on samples, if I'm right. Um, I'm not sure. But I mean, technically, you could call that a samples from metal objects that's a bit of a stretch um and so then that goes through compression ott and then a phaser and then a bit of eq as well and then i mixed that down re-imported it and then um duplicated it and pitched it up an octave um and then these both have reverb compression and um, sidechain compression um, so this is the sidechain I use as kickstart um, which I prefer for like electronic tracks like this because you don't have to quite often if you're sidechaining a lot of things you have to get you have to have like maybe two or three ghost kick tracks just to get enough sends to go to all the things so I prefer to use this which is basically just like an LFO um, so you don't have to deal with all the, the sends and stuff but actual side chaining um, just makes it a bit cleaner uh, and then same for this one but this one doesn't have side chain but oh, well I think the side chain is automated on this one um, and it's got ozone imager which slightly slightly um, widens the stereo field um, and they both go into a group channel where I've just got a filter for some automation so that's the vibraphone that sounds like this um, I think does that also uh, no it doesn't get a sense to play reverb um, and there's two more left. This one is the one that starts off the track. Uh, so that's just a, a basic serum patch that I made. Um, kind of emulating uh, a dead mouse style. Um, so it's just couple of sine waves, one is has unison and a bit detuned, the other is has no detune but it's pitched up a uh, fifth and then uh, a sub oscillator as well and just a really short envelope modulating filter which has um, quite high resonance uh, and then a multiband compressor which is basically the same thing as OTT and then a little bit of um, EQ which I think it's not automated, that just cuts out a bit of the high end. Uh, and then, so I used a technique that Dead Mouse also uses a lot, and I've used a couple of times in a few previous tracks, um, is having it be, so using polymeters. Um, so the synth hits uh, every dotted eighth note, which is every third 16th note um, so it takes something that would be really boring if it was just you know straight eighth notes uh, and makes it quite interesting because it kind of goes in and out of phase with the kick uh, so if I play this the serum um, synth with just the kick It's a lot more interesting if they just hit every uh, 18th note. Um, and so then there's this one last synth, and this is the one that's... This is probably the most heavily processed sound in the track, because this synth is actually um, 
entirely based on a metal sample. So if I play it, uh, solo it. So the way I did that is by it started off as bolt lock three, which is that one. Um, so if we go to where that sample is, here we are. So that sample, uh, yeah. Um, so without anything on it, just sounds like this. And then I added so that's a filter to take out some low end, and then some saturation, and then another high pass filter. Uh, and then I was just using a tuner to tune it. And so with all those effects applied, I re um, bounced it down and re-imported it. And that sounds like this. And so then I took that and I imported it into Serum as a wavetable. Um, I can't remember which setting I used. I think it was... Um, split at zero crossing or something like that and then um, I trimmed off the end of the sample um, and then morphed between them to get a slightly smoother sound and then uh, normalized each gain separately, remove DC offset and then uh, morph and well, I think I did a uh, crossfade edges as well, something like that. Um, and then I've got a quite slow LFO just modulating the position of the wavetable along with a uh, similar thing to the other serum, which is very short envelope modulating the uh, the filter uh, with, with quite a high resonance. If I just do, do, do. Um, cut it here. So, filter with quite high resonance being, and the frequency of that's being modulated by a short envelope, and then that goes through uh, another OTT, and then a bit of tube distortion, uh, and then that goes through sausage factor, which is just is uh, saturation distortion, and then ping pong delay, sixteenth. Uh, um, then some plate reverb with you know, high pass filter, uh, and this is um, rev plate by Arteria, which is an emulation of the old um, EMT plate reverbs. Uh, and then got uh, a quite fast uh, pancake, which um, pans it left to right. Uh, that's a hundred percent as well. So that's, that's a very strong panning. And then just another sidechain. And I think that's all of the elements covered. Yeah, and then just got a uh, plate reverb, which is uh, it's got a high pass filter going into another um, rev plate, um, quite a short decay um, with a little bit of drive. And a little bit of EQ, and then I like to sidechain my reverb as well, um, and then loud max again just to control, to automate the volume. Um, so yeah, and then I just went through, did some automation, and then there's a small um, reversed vibraphone just to lead into the section. So that's combined with the reverse bolt lock, so it sounds like this. Um, and yeah, I think that's it, just module end. So this, this serum, I've linked the macro to the frequency and um, where else does it go? Um, oh, okay, and then the decay and sustain of the envelope, the filter resonance, um, the 
low pass EQ and the distortion. So as you open that up, it just it opens up the, the sound. <laughs> So you get that kind of effect. Um, and I think that that's everything.